I hope you guys brought your spelunking gear, because it's time to go cave diving. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your boy, Vitamin M, coming at you with another episode of Pokemon Silver here. In the last episode, we went through the ice path and made it to Blackthorn City here. That's a pretty cool place we'll get to explore in a little bit, but in this episode, I want to explore a little bit more of the other side of Dark Cave and finally get our last team member to add to the team. So, right here, we can get to this side of Dark Cave right here. Once again, if you remember all the way back from Route 31, that was the other entrance to that on the other side of Johto, so this can be a nice shortcut. But really, there's nothing too spectacular in this area, um, besides obviously some stronger Pokemon, and maybe just one item you might want to grab that I do want to show off if this is something you want to consider. But nothing too spectacular about this place. Once again, going through this place is not required whatsoever to play through the full story or anything like that. This isn't required. Uh, this is kind of more of a side quest, if anything. But anyways, we see this guy in the cave right here, and there is actually a couple new Pokemon that you can come across in this cave. Maybe we'll see him now. No, we won't, but you can catch Gravelers and Golbats here, but there is another Pokemon here by the name of Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet is a pure psychic type that is very famous for not being able to directly attack you. What happens is it only knows moves like Counter and Mirror Coat, and it can't learn any other moves, so it can only take damage and then inflict double damage after taking either a physical or special move. I think it's awful, but it is tournament banned from what I've heard just because of that. And having Destiny Bond and Safeguard, it's a good team player, but it's nothing really great in single player. It's really only good for competitive play. Anyways, we can talk to this guy here. Whoa, you startled me there. I had my black glasses on, so I didn't notice you at all. What am I doing here? Hey, don't worry about it. I'll give you a pair of black glasses, so forget you saw me, okay? Why am I going to receive the black glasses? Okay, this is kind of interesting. Black glasses ups the power of tar dark type moves. Dark type moves. <laughs> of dark type moves, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a nice item if you want that. But this is Wobbuffet right here. Nothing, I don't think he's anything too spectacular. Really pass up on him in single player mode like this. But he's pretty good in um, competitive play, just to be something to take damage and then however da much damage he takes, he'll inflict double if you guess if they used a physical or special move. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And there is another Pokemon in this place in particular that is available to you in Pokemon Crystal. That is also available to you outside of this cave on Route 45, which I'm going to be talking about there because it's also a gold, Pokemon Gold exclusive Pokemon. And I am just running into every wild Pokemon that I can. <laughs> um, okay, that's fine. But yeah, nothing to... I'm not going to need the black glasses, but I wanted to show that off because those items that do up the power of certain types of moves are pretty helpful. But here we are on Route 45 here, and there are some new Pokemon that are available to us. So, starting off from the bat right here, we also have some Gravelers and some Geodudes, some other things like that. But right off the bat, we have a Gold exclusive Pokemon. So in Pokemon Gold and Crystal version... There is a Pokemon by the name of Gligar. Gligar is a ground flying type. Very, very strange type, if you ask me. Um, pass up on it. It doesn't really get a lot of great moves. It's super duper fast, has a good physical attack stat, but it gets a lot better from those moves because of the physical special split in Generation 4 and also with getting, getting Gly score later on. Um, as you saw there, Fanfi is a ground type Pokemon that is only available to you in silver and crystal version here. You can actually catch its evolved form of Donphin here in crystal version. But Fanfi is a pure ground type. It's very defensive, a little more slower, but it does pack a decent punch. It is pretty good if you don't... Um, well, it is actually a pretty good Pokemon. It's something not really to complain about. But, as right here, this is our final team member right here. This is a Pokemon by the name of Skarmory. Skarmory is a steel flying type. Very, very interesting type. But this thing is a defensive wall. This thing holds up to things physically. 
Its special defense may not be the best in the world, but this thing holds on. This can be great as a wall, and it's got a pretty decent attack stat. It's really a good Pokemon. I've used it before, and I thought I would bring it along on this adventure as our last team member right here. It's actually a really good Pokemon. Uh, getting that Steel-type is pretty nice, but it's not going to be learning Steel-type moves until way, way later, which is unfortunate. But it makes a good Flying-type, for sure. Um, as I said, great defensive stat. A little bit slower, but it can pack a pretty good punch with its physical attack. It's really good at standing up to things. And just like that, that is our last teammate right there. So that is awesome right here. Skarmory is a great Pokemon. I highly suggest you pick it up. It's a very unique Steel type. Finally on this route, there's a Pokemon by the name of Teddy Ursa. Uh, Teddy Ursa is a pure normal type and is very slow, but it evolves into Ursaring, which is a great normal type Pokemon. It's very, very slow, but it has a fantastic attack stat, and it can be very, very versatile in what it does. It gets Thrash later on, and that is pretty much the best thing that it gets in this game. It is a fantastic Pokemon if you like it. You don't mind it being very slow, but that is only available to you in gold version here, and within Dark Cave there in gold, or excuse me, crystal version, you can actually catch Teddy Ursa and Ursaring. So that's kind of nice there. So yeah, that's kind of a lot of the Pokemon here in this area. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and take out Skarmory of the PC here. Deposits. Um... Yeah, Bellsprout here. Just use Bellsprout for Flash there. Also, it's time to say goodbye to Lugia. Because now we got a new flying type on the block. In the form of Skarmory. So this is going to be pretty great. Skarmory is a definitely... De is a definitely, yeah. <laughs> Skarmory is definitely a pretty good Pokemon. So... Oh shoot, I should probably go get my other teammate. But I will teach it Fly right away here. Uh, Skarmory... It's really good for having Steel Wing for that Steel type move, but it doesn't really get that until a lot later when it's leveling up, and that TM is really towards the end of the game. Kind of very similar to uh, all the evolutionary stones and stuff, which really does suck. I'll just go ahead and get rid of Peck there. Alright, so we're pretty good. So I need to grab Giraffe Rig actually. But um, it's going to be pretty much time to train Skarmory right here. So, yeah, that's pretty much what's up. So I think going forward here, before I face the 8th gym here, what I really want to do is I want to basically go around Johto here and pick up a bunch of the things that we can now get thanks to a lot of the T... Excuse me, a lot of the HMs we've been able to acquire. Um, because I think beating the gym and then doing all those things just kind of kills the momentum, if anything. So, okay, actually, I can't make up my mind. So I'm actually really going to need uh, whatever his name is. Um, I'm actually going to need Bellsprout for cut for a couple things. So I thought I would just kind of do a super cut of that, if anything. Uh, oh, we don't need Typhlosion. Yeah, we don't need Typhlosion. We're okay. He's the highest leveled anyway, so it's okay. So I thought I would kind of go ahead and do a super cut of that. I thought that would just be kind of nice. Um, because I know we've seen a lot of trees that we can cut down, a lot of areas we can, we can surf now. And I kind of wanted to con condense that all together, all together just so we're not doing everything just kind of out of nowhere here. So, with that in mind, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead. I think the first place we can go is actually Cherry Grove City right here. Yeah, so here we are, back in Jerry Grove's Cherry Grove City, kicking it off real good. You can actually catch Staryu here at night with the fishing rod, so that is a pretty good place to catch him. We talked to this guy. A Pokemon I caught had an item. I think it's Mystic Water. I don't need it, so do you want it? I'm going to receive the Mystic Water. So this is an item that actually ups the power of water moves. It's a really, really useful item, if you ask me. It's a pretty great addition to your item collection that I highly suggest you do pick up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it to... Uh, what's his name? Gold Duck right here. Just so he's finally got an item to hold on to. And I think I'm also going to give that iron to 
Skarmory right here. He's basically going to be our big wall through this all. Um, I also want to give this rare candy to him. I'm not going for any friendship evolutions in this Let's Play or anything like that, but so I can just go ahead and give that to Skarmory, I think. So, rare candies automatically level up a Pokemon, as you can see. And... Um... I've noticed, I think this is what my brother and I have noticed, I don't know if this is for sure a real thing, but what happens, I think, is after the next level, it takes more EXP than it necessarily would need. So that's something to just keep in mind. I think we can surf somewhere here and get another item, but I don't... I might be just thinking of a remake, honestly. Um, I don't quite remember. But I do know that we can actually go to Mr. Pokemon's house right here, and he'll actually have something nice for us since we completed a pretty big milestone within the story. So, head over to his house, talk to him. Mm, that scale, what's that? A red Gyarados? That's rare. I, I want it. Vitamin M, would you care to trade it? I can offer this EXP share I got from Professor Oak. Vitamin M received the EXP share, so this is a hold item that you can give to your Pokemon. And basically, what happens is you give it to a Pokemon, it will hold it, and any EXP, whether it's on the field or not, it will gain, I believe, half of it. And you can use that to have it not battle, but then still gain EXP. It can be good for um, getting it some EXP when you don't want it to be out in battle, stuff like that. So, that's just something to keep in mind. It's a pretty useful item for that. Um, I know in later games, it's definitely kind of broken, <laughs> where it gives it all to all... Well, it gives basically all of it to all of your team members, which I think has always been super duper silly. I've always thought that was stupid. It made the game way too easy. I remember playing Omega Ruby, and it just made it so easy. Here we are, we found this secret Hyper Potion here, now that we have a uh, cut there. So that's pretty neat, if you ask me. I think we can also surf up here towards the Sprout Tower here in Violet City. And I believe there is a... Uh, I believe there's a rare candy over here to the right, which is going to be pretty helpful for us. Get another level up there for um, Skarm right here, so that should be pretty good. Man, this is awesome. We got a full team now. We are ready to go. This um got another rare candies. That's awesome. This uh this eighth gym is gonna be pretty brutal. Um I don't want to spoil too much about it, but it can be pretty nasty. So we'll see what's happening with that. But um So, I'm just going to keep going around Johto here. Definitely be... Yeah, just kind of going around town, seeing what's going on. Talk to this guy. Kind of scares us a little bit. He gives us TM05, which is Roar. It's Roar! Even Pokemon run from a good Roar. Basically, if you use it in a wild battle, it will cause the opponent Pokemon to go away, so if I was in this wild battle and I use Roar, that would basically cause the other Pokemon to go away, and the battle would end. If you use it within a trainer battle, it will swap out the opponent Pokemon and randomly pick another one and cause that one to come out onto the field, which is kind of handy if you really want that strategy going for you. Uh, so that can be kind of nice. Here we are in the basement of Union Cave. Basically, this is where we found the Swift TM. And if you swim across the water here using Surf, you can get to this area with the hikers. And there's actually two entrances right here to the um, Ruins of the Alf where they have different puzzles here. There's one to the south here where you have to move that boulder with strength. That's one puzzle. Each puzzle you solve allows you to get a new set of unknown in the Ruins of the Alf if you're going for that side quest. But I never really bother with that one. But the one of interest that... Okay, before I was so rudely interrupted there. The one of interest that's over here is actually this one to the north here. And what you want to do 
is get through here, and there is a patch of grass over here at the Runes of the Elf, as you can see. And in that cave over there, there's also another puzzle that, once again, when you solve it, it will open up another set of unknown for you to collect. There are four puzzles in total. I'm not going to be showing them because I thought the Runes of the Elf was always kind of a waste of time, but the Pokémon that are newly found in this past excuse me, patch of grass right here. I'll be explaining as I fight this guy right here. So, on this area of the Ruins of the Elf, we have available to us two new Pokemon. One of them is Nachu. Now, Nachu is a psychic flying type, very interesting type, just like Lugia. It's, um, it's actually a really good Pokemon. I've used it before, and I want to say Pokemon Emerald. Not in this game, though, <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, it's got some strange moves when it levels up, but it can do some trickery with Confuse Ray and a couple other things. Uh, obviously you can teach it fly right off the bat. It evolves pretty early on, so I think around level 25 or so into Zoctu. It's actually a really good Pokemon. It's not too bad. If you're looking for a Psychic type and haven't really liked your options, unless you really don't want to use Lugia, Zoctu is actually a really good choice, so that's pretty much Nachu. And then the other choice that is available to you is a Pokemon by the name of Smeargle. Now, Smeargle is a really special Pokemon because it has both the largest and the smallest move pole, because it can only know one move by the, the name of Sketch. Now, Sketch, if used on the opponent after they've used a move, will allow it to copy that move forever. So even after it dies or heals or whatever after you catch it, then you will be able to still know that move. It is, unfortunately, a really awful normal type. It's... Hi, Mom. What did she buy? Oh, I saw this adorable doll. Okay, so she gets you accessories to kind of customize your room, but I'm never really at home that often, so that's just what's up with that. But, yeah, Smeargle is just a really awful normal type. I really don't recommend it whatsoever. Um, yeah, really pass up on it. It's really only good for breeding. That's kind of it. But anyways... Let's get back into Union Cave, because there is also something else for us here. So if we come over here to the bottom left corner of the first floor, we can actually swim over this way, and actually go down this ladder. Uh, I'm not really going to be fighting these people, I know there's at least one required battle here for where I want to go, and I'll probably go ahead and skip over that one. But anyways, here we are in the absolute basement of um, Union Cave here, and you want to... Wow, words are really hard. You want to come here on Fridays, because once every Friday there is a very special Pokemon here that you can catch, and only on Fridays here. And I highly recommend that, even though we're pretty late into the adventure here, I highly, highly, highly recommend you think about using this Pokemon. This Pokemon is a fantastic choice to any team whatsoever, but I'll be getting there eventually. But, uh, yeah, here we are. So, once again, that has to be on Fridays, though. I think I'm just barely making the cut here. But, anyways... Um, I think after this, then I'll pretty much be done with, um... Oh, well, I have to fight... Yeah, I have to fight this girl, so I'll probably just skip this battle. Alright. To the editing room! Okay, now that we just beat her up... Okay, I probably shouldn't have said that that way. <laughs> I, uh, I recommend that you have a Pokemon that can inflict a status condition or something like that. So, with that in mind here, I'm just going to go ahead and save just for the heck of it. But this is, once again, this is a Pokemon that you can catch it once every Friday, which is actually really nice. So, if you come over here, we notice that, that there's a wild encounter right here, right in the middle of the water. Man, Tentacool just never goes away. This guy's so annoying. They are everywhere. So run away! So now we're back from the editing room. We can actually talk to this blue little thing we got here. This is a Pokemon by the name of Lapras. Lapras is a really, really, really good um, water ice type. I almost forgot to take him there for whatever reason. But it is level 20 here. So after you beat Morty in a Crudic Gym and you have Surf... You can come here right away if it's Friday and grab one for your team. Lapras is a beast. It is a really, really good special defensive tank, and it has a ton of HP to back it up. Um, man, it's just such a great Pokemon, and it gets some really awesome moves with it. 
you can teach it surf. I think it gets hypnosis, parish songs, some other things. But the biggest draw for me personally is, you know, it can't learn ice punch, but to back up its ice type, it gets to learn ice beam naturally. And I think it gets it pretty early on, around level 29 or so, something like that. Just Lapras is such a really good Pokemon. It is able to learn a lot, it can pack a punch, and it will stand up to a lot. This thing is just one of the best water types, if not arguably the best water type you could possibly come across in the game, besides maybe Suicune. But I don't know, I think Lapras has a really good argument for itself. Um, I'm just trying to make up my mind what I want to do here. Um, let me go ahead and go with Skarmory here. But, oh my gosh, Lapras is so good. I have used Lapras, I think, at least once in this game. And, um maybe in red and blue or so, but it is such a fantastic Pokemon. It's so good. I highly recommend. And it also comes with Body Slam right off the bat. An 85 power normal type move that can paralyze and it even learns Confuse Ray. It just, it's such a fantastic Pokemon. You really do want to add it to your team. If you haven't found a water type and you're really looking for one, um, it's just such a great Pokemon. There's really man, Really, the only downside I can think of is it is a little bit slower, but it is so awesome. Oh, come on! Oh, man, we were close, though. It's just such a good Pokemon. I just, I can't sing enough praises of it. It's that great. And, yeah, honestly, I really thought about using Lapras on my team for this Let's Play. Um, but I think I wanted to do something different. So I always, so I wanted to try Gold Duck. But, honestly... You can't go wrong with Lapras whatsoever. Oh, come on! Alright, but we're just walling it. Okay, nice. Alright, well, um... I hope this isn't Lugia all over again. That would suck. Okay, we got it! <laughs> Alright, I was a little worried there for a sec. But that's basically Lapras here. Once again, you can get one every Friday here. So you can get literally an infinite amount of Laprases. But that'll do for that right here. So that's pretty much it for Union Cave. Now on to the next area. Okay, and here we are now at the bottom of Slowpoke Well. Basically what you needed was to use Strength on a Boulder right where we fought the last Team Rocket guy, and then you just gotta surf around here. There's kinda two items that's really down here for you. One of them is TM18, which is Rain Dance. Basically, it works the same thing as uh, Sunny Day, where it'll be five turns where it is raining on the field, Water-type moves are boosted, and Fire-type moves aren't as effective, but the other side to that is if you have a Pokemon with the move Thunder, Thunder will be 100% accurate in the rain, which can be pretty nice if you're going for that strategy. But we talked to this guy, he says, I'm waiting to see Slowpoke's moment of evolution through ob observatory, observation. <laughs> I made a new discovery. A Slowpoke with a King's Rock often gets bitten by a shelter. Here, I'll share a King's Rock with you. Find him and receive the King's Rock, and this is the item that will allow you to evolve Slowpoke and actually Poliwhirl into their respective forms for evolution if you want that. So, oh, I don't think he says anything else, but basically for that, you have to have them hold the King's Rock, trade them, and then they'll evolve. So that goes with Slowpoke and Poliwhirl. Slowpoke will evolve into Slow King, which has the same... Basically the same stats as Slowbro, and I should also mention that Slowbro can be found surfing at the bottom of the well there. Um, basically, when it comes down to Slowbro versus Slow King, what it comes down to is what kind of defense do you want him to major in. Uh, special defense will be better with Slow King, while physical defense will be better with Slowbro. Their attack capabilities are pretty much the same. I kind of prefer Slow King, but that's just me. I think Slow King is definitely cooler, but they're both very slow, as you can imagine. And um, Poliwhirl has the option to evolve into Politoed. Politoed is a pure water type, unlike Poliwrath, which is a water fighting type. And Politoed is actually kind of a good Pokemon. I've never really used it. I always prefer Poliwrath because I like having the fighting type with it. You guys know me. I like having the macho-ness that comes with it. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for Slowpoke's Well. So I'll go ahead and skip to the next area of interest.
So we had to fly to Goldenrod anyways for the next thing I want to show, so I thought I'd go ahead and get this. Thank you, you're my hero. This is a token of my appreciation. Vitamin received TM11, and if foreshadowing is any clue, this is actually Sunny Day. It's Sunny Day, it powers up Fire-type moves for a while. So basically, the sun will come out for five moves, and... As she said, Fire-type moves will be powered up, Water-type moves will be much lower, and if you have a Pokémon with the move Solar Beam, it won't have to wait the first turn to charge, it will use Solar Beam automatically, without having to wait the first turn and then attack on the second. Which will be pretty nice. So, weather can be a pretty interesting uh, strategy if you really want to go for that. I've never really gone out of my way for that, which is kind of the best I can always think I would maybe want to go with, is having Rain Dance with a... Uh, with an electric type, but that's just kind of my thing if I have a thunder with me, pressing the wrong button. But we can go down here south. Oh, we need to surf a little bit more. And there's actually kind of a really nice item that you can get down here, but unfortunately it's going to be behind three battles right in a row here. So this can be pretty tough, honestly, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave Skarmory out so we can get leveled up here. But you're going to have to fight all three of these girls right in a row with no breaks whatsoever. And they have a pretty nice item for you that I think you really do want to grab. I know I'm going to really like it for my team. But they all have water types, so they start with the basic form and then the evolve form of another type. And yeah, we're just going to be getting some good experience right here, honestly. So yeah, so I know the first girl, I think she has Goldeen and then Seeking. And the second girl, I want to say, has Shelter and Cloister. And the third girl has Staryu and Starmie. The second and third one might be skipped, but um, I'm not going to bore you guys with these battles. So I'll just go ahead and skip to after I've defeated them. All right, and we have now defeated them. So we talked to this girl, the third one here. You're too strong. I didn't stand a chance. Here, you deserve this. I never received the Soft Sand. This is a fantastic item. This... I'm sorry we jumped you. We never expected anyone to find us here. You sure startled us. This is an item that ups the power of ground-type moves. And this is going to be a really nice thing for Nidoking when he eventually gets another move that I cannot wait to teach him whatsoever. So this is going to be really nice for us right here. I think I gave the sharp beak to Skarmory, I want to say. Or no, I didn't. Uh, let me go ahead and give the King's Rock to Skarmory for now. He doesn't need EXP share. Um... So that'll be pretty good. I, I think I have... Um... Anyways, now that that is over with, really the last area I can think to fly to for anything really important to get to right now is the Lake of Rage. So we get over here to the Lake of Rage, and I think there's actually a couple trainers that we can fight here now. I think there's some fishermen and some ace trainers we can fight, maybe? Or maybe I'm just thinking of the remake. It's possible, I'm just thinking of the remake. But we talked to her. Yeah, we can actually fight her. So, anyways, I won't worry about this now. I won't bore you guys with this. So I'm just going to skip ahead to the good stuff. Okay, and this is this area over here, the Lake of Rage, while you're heading north to it. I totally forgot to fight that guy right there, in all honesty. But anyways, he just had some Gyarados and some Magic Heart. And uh, we can go up this way. I think in the remakes, this part of the lake would be, I want to say, um, flooded on certain days. But, wow, okay, it... Holy cow, a hidden full restore, that's kind of nice. Basically, that's a hyper potion of full heal all in one, which is really nice. So we can cut right here. There's actually a couple items we can get up this way, north of the lake here. It looks like there's a couple battles, so I'm going to skip that guy for right now. So we're just kind of cutting away at the trees right here. So, yeah, so I know this episode is probably going to be a little bit longer, but I just, like I said, I really wanted to... Um, I really wanted to go around Johto and do some of the big things that you can do now that you have a bunch of the HMs stockpiled, basically, and I thought it was best to do it this way. And before doing the 8th gym battle, in order not to mess with the, um, ruin the momentum of the story, because when you play it right off the bat, you really do, after you beat the 8th gym, you really want to get on to the next thing right away. Trust me. It's just, you have that feeling of going about everything like that. Team 43, what is that? I think that's... What is that again? I think it's Detect. Let me check here. You really want to get moving afterwards. Okay, Detect. Detect is basically 
the same thing as protect. It will um, save you from getting hit by something, or getting hit by, uh, by an attack. But the more you use it, the more likely it is to fail. But we go in this house right here. You have strayed, strayed far. Here I have meditated inside me. A new power has been awakened. Let me share my power with you, your Pokemon. Take this, child. Why don't we receive TM10? This is hidden power. It's kind of a worthless move. Um, it's hidden power. It draws out of the power of Pokemon for attacking. Remember this. It's type and power depend on the Pokemon using it. So I don't know exactly how that is determined mathematically or anything within the game, so I don't know what to tell you guys there. But basically, like he said, it's random. It depends on the Pokemon for its power and its type. Um... It's just kind of something to, I don't know, give Pokemon another move if it doesn't have anything, and it's a chance that you may be able to have, I don't know, if you have an Espeon and Hidden Power is Steel-type for it. I don't know what to tell you. It's kind of a little worthless to me, but oh well. I know some people like it to give some more variation. But as I was saying, though, I think it was best to go ahead and do everything with the HMs that you can do get some of the big stuff, and then just move on with the momentum of the story afterwards. I think that would be... I thought that was going to be better, and I think it is, so it, I'm not sure this episode is longer, so I do apologize for a longer episode, but at the same time, I think it's for the best of the end of the Let's Play here, which I think we're, we're coming up on the end of it here. This is a little bit of a shorter game, but it's a very good game. But... Yeah, so we're just fighting this guy right here, and I will see you guys in a sec. Okay, and I think finally there's a couple things that are available to you in Blackthorn City right here. First, we can talk to this girl. Dragonair's cute, but I don't have it. Do you have Dragonair? Want to trade for my Rhydon? Um, well, this can kind of depend. I don't have one, but in all honesty... Uh, why did I talk to you, though? I do prefer Dragonair over Rhydon. Rhydon is a ground rock type, the evolved form of Rhyhorn. We haven't been able to come across Rhyhorn yet, but um, it basically, if you haven't picked up a Graveler or a Golem, Rhydon is pretty good, but I definitely prefer the Dragonair family more, for sure. But finally, we have this house right here, the Move Deleter's house. So you can talk to this guy right here. This is the Move Deleter, so any of the moves that your Pokemon know, he will get rid of them. And this is the only way to get rid of HM moves on Pokemon. So make sure you remember that this guy is here, and maybe if you had to teach a Pokemon Strength, on the fly or something like that, and you don't want it to know it anymore, come back to this guy. So, that's really all I have to say, and yeah, I know this was a little bit of a longer episode, but like I said, kind of wanted to go through everything before we took on this eighth and final gym right here. So next time on Pokemon Silver, we're going to be taking out Blackthorn City's gym and seeing what kind of brawl it has for us. So, with that in mind, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next episode. Vitamin M, I'm out, dudes.